Filson does a lot of strange things. Does anybody remember the $200 plus Chilean snack table? So they, they do some weird stuff, especially after the sale. They only offered something like 28 products for most of their history. And then when Filson sold, um, they, they expanded that to over 200 products. But still, what they do right, they do very right. So usually, if it's their Mackinac wool products, most of their luggage, you, you, it's a pretty safe bet that you're getting some decent stuff. I mean, a perfect example is my old, this is like second hand, third hand, I don't know, I bought it on eBay for a steal. It was like 70 bucks. This is one of their, this is their original briefcase in their rugged twill, which is like insanely durable. I mean, really, next to leather, this is probably one of the most durable uh, textiles out there. It's just amazing. So when they do things right, they do them very right. So about a year ago, I got the Filson Tin Cloth Backpack. And this was supposed to be really just kind of as a day bag. And the reason I was gonna carry it is because with a two and a four year old, you're always carrying snacks, water, an extra change of clothes, diapers, wipes, all the stuff that goes along with it and basically anything else that my wife can possibly stuff into that backpack we carry with us. And I wasn't gonna carry some, you know, wimpy looking thing. I wanted something decent. And I like the looks of this backpack, so that, that's why I got this one. It was actually my first product of Filson's made from their tin cloth. So what I really needed was a backpack with a main compartment that was really, really big and open, just to be able to stuff all kinds of things in there. It also needs to be relatively flat so I can fit it underneath a stroller. And I really do prefer a messenger bag or some sort of briefcase type of bag, but it is nice to have the use of both of your hands to you know, wrangle the kids instead of having to worry about one shoulder strap falling off of your shoulder. So a backpack was really the perfect solution for this. Now in daily use, this backpack has been excellent. And I think that's really due to its simplicity. It's basically a square with straps. That's pretty much all it is at its core. It's not some overly technical thing with a million different zippers and special little compartments and pouches with you know, Velcro on them. That could be great when it comes to hiking and stuff like that. Uh, but in this case, what I really wanted was just an open bag with straps on it, and that's what it is, and it does the job very, very well. There's a single strapped closure for the main compartment, a leather drawstring, a small leather flapped pocket, and a removable interior organizer. And this, this piece is actually especially nice since it adds a little bit of modularity to the bag, and if you want to keep your tablet or your laptop or, you know, just a few office type of things separated and protected, you absolutely can. And they, they did a beautiful job. It basically snaps into the back and has a little pull thing, a little handle, so you can take it out if you really want to and kind of use it on its own if you really wanted. Most of the time, though, I leave this thing out because, as I mentioned, I just wanted a big, simple, one-compartment bag. Now, that main compartment does have a very handy little side zip access protected by a flap, and that means that my wife can reach things at the bottom of the bag while I'm still wearing it. And that zipper is definitely oversized, and it uses a generous leather pull string, so the nice thing about this is that even in the dark, you can find it and easily use it. The buckles on the leather straps are the roller type. They're solid brass, and they display the Filson name. And this is one of the small elements which make the bag feel like a premium product. In fact, all the hardware is really heavy-duty, solid brass, and oversized, which totally adds to the bag's distinct look. The thick, bridal leather is vegetable tanned, and if you look closely, you'll notice that the edges have been dyed. They're not burnished, but they are dyed. This is another small detail which most companies miss, instead of leaving the raw cut edges, and you'll even find the Filson logo on the very tip of the closure strap. Around the back of the bag are two shoulder straps from the same leather which attach to brass rings and adjust using those same roller buckles. No sternum strap or fine adjustment or hip strap or anything like that. But for a day pack, these things work just fine, even though they're not padded. The straps are wide enough to be comfortable, though I do I kind of wish there was a way to secure those loose ends. You know, usually when you adjust it, you have quite a bit of material at the end. And they sort of just flap in the breeze. And normally with nylon straps, you'd roll these things up to secure them, but since leather is thick, they just kind of hang in the wind. One place I think that this excellent leather was actually misused is in the flap of the small compartment. It's simply too stiff to really function well as a flap. And with such thin supporting material, and tin cloth is simply waxed and oiled cotton duck, really. What happens is this, this, the tin cloth flexes and it bends rather than the leather flexing. It looks great, don't get me wrong. 
but I really don't see the functional benefit in having such thick leather here. As I already mentioned, the tin cloth is just 15 ounce cotton duck material which has been saturated with liquefied paraffin wax and oil, which means that it's not waterproof, but more water resistant. And where it excels though is its resistance to abrasion and snags along with, let's face it, it ages beautifully. This material may be great for an outer layer or in a bag like this, but it's really not so great when it's directly against your skin. So Filson was very smart with their choices in materials. The back panel is padded and quilted for breathability, and the interior is lined in the same plush material to protect your belongings. Finally, the edges are nicely finished off with black leather, adding a level of refinement. And I think you could use this in all but the most formal offices as a laptop bag. Of course, none of this actually matters if its functionality is lacking, and I'm happy to report, however, that this backpack carries wonderfully, and it works very well in a number of situations. I've used it as my laptop bag for, you know, work and stuff. I've thrown a camera with a big old 70 to 200 lens on it in there, and even as an occasional hiking backpack. One thing I really like is the ability to use the center back strap to secure things to the exterior. It works really well to carry an extra layer or a rolled blanket or pretty much anything you can imagine that you could stick underneath there and cinch down. There's no provisions for hydration, but then again, this really isn't intended for hiking long distances where you'd want such things. The leather shoulder straps, as I mentioned before, they're not as comfortable as padded versions, but it's a trade-off for the heritage look and definitely not a deal breaker for me as a day pack. But just imagine what these things are going to look like once they break in and patina. I mean, it's going to be beautiful. Of course, there's always the issue of the price. Filson stuff isn't cheap. And at $375, this is a bag that deserves careful consideration and a good hard look at the competitive options before you buy it. One such option is the Rucksack Backpack from Duluth Pack. This thing's actually $135 cheaper, and it utilizes a very similar layout, albeit in a different design. Another great one is the Biographer Bag from Bradley Mountain. It's another great option at $325, and it features actually more capacity along with thicker main material. Another is the Mountain Back Canvas Backpack. It's an interesting choice. It's a little bit more expensive at $379, but it features a full leather back panel, which probably isn't the most comfortable thing against your back and the heat and stuff, but it does deserve a mention because some people may prefer this style. But what the Filson backpack really is, is a great tool when used for its intended purpose. Now, of course, this will never take the place of a hardcore hiking backpack, but that's really not what it's meant for. As a day bag, it's wonderful. And, you know, it is a bit more expensive, so the thing is you probably won't see a lot of students carrying this because who can afford nearly a $400 backpack when you have tuition and room and board and all that stuff to pay for? Or if you're a high school student, forget it. Maybe you have a part-time job. So it's really meant for those of us who are heading out for the day and don't plan on straying too far from home but need extra capacity. And, of course, being a Filson item, it's also maybe the thing that your kids are going to argue over when you're dead and gone. It's good to think about. Anyway, guys... Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it, and I'll catch you next time.